Hello, everybody. Welcome to another interesting and interactive session of Muskan, an initiative of Prabha Khitan Foundation and Education for All Trust, presented by Sri Simen Limited. Prabha Khitan Foundation is an organization based in Calcutta, founded by late Dr. Prabha Khitan. The foundation is dedicated to promote performing arts, culture, education, literature, gender equality, and women's empowerment. The foundation's latest initiative, Muskan, aims at popularizing heritage, literature, and culture among children and young adults by weaving it into formal and informal education through student activities. Some of the ways developed to do this are cultural programs, storytelling sessions, theater, dance, music, and art, which are organized via collaborations with our national and international associations and institutes, both in India and overseas. Today, we have with us Ms. Rupa Pai. Rupa Pai is one of India's best known writers for children. This Bangalore based author has written over 25 books, ranging from picture books to chapter books and fiction to nonfiction on themes as varied as sci fi fantasy, popular science, maths, history, economics, Indian philosophy, life skills, and most recently, medicine. Many of her books are bestsellers and are enjoyed as much by adults as by children. She has also co-authored fitness evangelist and supermodel Milan Soman memoir, Made in India, and is currently working on a book on poetry translation in which she is translating 100 poems of the much acclaimed Kannada poet, Padmashri K.S. Nisar Ahmed into English. When she is not writing, Rupa can be found leading groups of children and young people in history and heritage walks across her beloved Karnataka as part of her job as the director of a company she co-founded, Bangalore Walks. So welcome, Rupa Pai, to our session. So students, there'll be a question and answer round after the session. So please feel free to ask your questions by raising your hand or putting it up in the chat box. So without wasting any more time, I urge our audience to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's session. Over to you, Rupa. Hello, namaste, sat sri akal, salam alaikum. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm so delighted, my God, as I'm watching the participant count go up, it's like some 439 people have logged in for this session. I am delighted. Thank you all. There's so many other things you could have done with your time, you know, between five and six on a Friday evening, but you chose to attend this session. Thank you. I'm going to try and make it as entertaining and as fun as possible for all of you. Unfortunately, I would have liked to keep it much interactive. Let us see how we can go about it. But there are so many of you that it'll be impossible to, uh, you know, get all your answers in. Hi, Ananya, you have raised your hand, but I can't let you speak right now. Hi, Geet, uh, I can't let you all speak. Let me... Ah, you have my book. Okay, that's wonderful. Rehat, hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so I believe you guys are grade three through grade six. Would you all say you're big readers? So whatever you want to say, put it in the, I can't, I promise that I will read everyone's um, messages, but I will try and see. So who are your favorite authors? Just a few, like, I'll just keep it open for, hi, hi, Kavya. I'll just keep it open for a minute, maybe the chat boxes. I mean, uh, Enid Blyton, great. She was my favorite as well. Okay. It's the most productive Enid Blyton. So many of you read Enid Blyton and Roald Dahl, Sophie Anderson. I don't know who Sophie Anderson is. I should find out. Geronimo Stilton. Sudhamurthy, Ruskin Bond, uh, wait, Sudhamurthy, Devdat Patnaik, J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling took a long time coming. I thought she'd be the first one. Anyway, Enid Blyton, Sudhamurthy, Arl Stein. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lewis Carroll. Okay. Sukumar Ray, Jonathan Swift. Uh, Old Dal, Ruskin Bond. Okay. Harry Potter. Harry Potter is uh, the book. Yeah. Not the author. Okay. Fine. Okay. Great. Thank you for your, thank you for your inputs. Thank you very much. So as always, you know, I've been an Indian children's writer for, uh, I don't know how many years I've even forgotten 25 years, maybe. Yeah. I've been writing for children for 25 years and Taylor Swift is not a writer. She's a singer. The Bhagavad Gita is not a author. Caroline Keen. Okay, so that you like Nancy Drew books. Fine, fine. Okay, I'm not going to read the chats anymore. Okay, 
So this is great that you all read so much and you're also familiar. And I'm so thrilled that some of you read are, are enjoying Enid Blyton because she was my favorite author growing up. But I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that at least you have two Indian authors, maybe three. I saw Ruskin Bond and Siddhamurthy uh, come up a lot. And then one of you said Devdat Patnaik. But that's about it. And, you know, it's my job. It's, it has been my job for the last 25 years as an ambassador of Indian children's writing and Indian children's writers to introduce children across India to Indian children's authors. And there are so many of us now, you know. When I was growing up, when I was your age, we didn't have any books by Indian writers at all. And I don't know if you know how that makes a child feel. I read In Blight and she's a fabulous storyteller. There's no doubt about it. I enjoyed her books. She, and luckily for all of us, she wrote 700 books, more than 700 books. Yeah, crazy. So we never ran out of In Blight and books to read, which was fantastic. And she really, because I wanted to be a writer, she really taught me how to tell a good story, how to pack it with interesting plot twists, how to put in fun dialogue, how to write about food, how to write about fun, and how to, in, how to weave a moral into the story as well without calling it the moral of the story. By the time you finished reading an Enid Black story, you felt, huh, one shouldn't be jealous like that. It it's, doesn't help. One should always help others. All these good values came into any reader of Enid Blyton books, right? But everybody was always having fun. But for me, growing up, because I never got to read any books with Indian children as the characters, except Amar Chitra Katha, of course, but all those Indian children in Amar Chitra dressed very differently from me, lived a very long time ago, I had nothing in common with them. So what I grew up feeling, sadly, was that only British children had all the fun. And my childhood was no fun at all, because I wasn't doing what those British children were doing, which is a very sad way to grow up, right? So I, I'm, I'm very happy that you guys have Ruskin Bond to read and Sudha Murthy to read. Ruskin Bond was also writing when I was young, but he, only, he didn't have as many books out as he has now, obviously, because that was, I was young a very long time ago. Yeah, you know, so it was, it's been very long since I was young. Yeah, somebody has one, is got their audio on, I think. Okay, anyway, so when I was growing up, I only read in Black books. I thought only British children, all the fun. And then when I was about 13, I came across a fabulous children's magazine called Target. It was an Indian children's magazine. It came out of Delhi. And for the first time when I turned its pages, it had stories about children exactly like me, Indian children living in India. And I used to always feel these British children have so much fun. They can just go off on their cycles by themselves. And they have all these secret seven meetings and famous five adventures. And my life is, I don't have any adventures. I'm just sitting at home all the time. And if we have to go for a picnic, then so many of us, cousins, uncles, aunts are bumped into, are bunched up in one car and we go somewhere to a park that I've already been a hundred times before. It's no fun at all. I never get to go away from my adults. It's horrible. You know, I used to think like this. And I used to look at the descriptions of all the food they ate in England, all those children. And I said, oh my God, my food is so boring. Lemon rice, curd rice. I'm a South Indian, remember? So, you know, this is not fun food at all. Look at all those children having a lot of fun. But when I came across Target, I read about children who were exactly like me, eating exactly my kind of food, having exactly my kind of life, but they seem to be loving their lives. And then I told myself, my God, have I been seeing this all wrong? Maybe my life is actually very wonderful and I've just not been able to see it because I'm so... Uh, I'm so impressed by, I'm so sucked into Enid Blyton's world that I'm not getting my head out of the book and looking around me and seeing how lucky I am. You know, and then many years later, I went to live in England and then I realized all the sunny days of Enid Blyton books, you know, they're always cycling in the countryside in the summer and the sun is always shining. I went to England, I lived there for a year and I realized the sun shone for about 60 days in the whole year. And that made me depressed. And I said, what was in Blyton writing about? It's never sunny here. It's just gray and cold and awful. It's always raining. And I missed the Indian sun so much. And I missed Indian food so much. And I just missed being around Indian people so much and being in my own country. And that's when, even when I was reading Target, you know, as a child, I said, you know, I, I do want to be a writer when I grow up. 
but now I know what kind of writer I want to be. I want to be a writer of Indian stories for Indian children so that no, never again will another generation of children have to grow up feeling that somebody else, somewhere else in some other country has a better childhood than their own. I want to help children appreciate their own heritage, their own history, their languages, their culture, their festivals, their people, and their lives, which are so rich because there are so, so much diversity in our country, right? So this is what I thought to myself. And I grew up and I joined Target magazine. That was my dream that I should join that same magazine which had given me so much joy and I should begin writing for children there. I did that. And then today, the book that we're going to talk about, it's not a book, it's a whole series of books. It's India's first fantasy adventure series. And I was so proud, I'm, I am so proud to have written it because this is my dream series. I've written many books after that and they've all been very successful, but Tara Knots has a very special place in my heart because that was my dream book when I was 13, 12, when I was thinking I want to grow up and write Indian stories for Indian children, this is the kind of story I wanted to write. So let me just show you the books. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, if any of you has ever seen them or read these books, but they're exactly for your age. So, and you know, J.K. Rowling wrote seven books. So I said to myself, I'll write eight. My series will have eight books. So there are eight books in the Taranon series. They are way thinner than the Harry Potter books. But I think I would, I, I think at least to me, they're as much fun. Okay. So let me show them to you. This is the first one. I'll show it to you better on a PowerPoint later. But, you know, this is the first book. This is the second book. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth book in the series. Can you see them clearly? Yeah, yeah. And this is the sixth one. It, these are very old copies, okay? The last one, the last Taranauts book was written in 2013. So it was released in 2000, so it's a very long time ago. This is book number seven. Uh, I don't know if you can see it because it's also got this foil cover. So anyway. Yeah, so that's book number seven, and this is book number eight. Okay, so I wrote eight books, and I want to take you through the world of the Taranauts. <clears throat> Today, that's what I want to do. So I thought in the beginning that I would set my, because I want to write such Indian books, I said, obviously, my book will be set in India. And maybe if some of you have read The Faraway Tree, you know what happens, right? In the faraway tree in Enid Blyton books, there is a tree and every, every 15 days or every month, a new world comes and sits on top of the tree. And the children who live below the faraway tree, they climb up to go and visit that world. And they find out, they meet all kinds of new characters that every world is different from the previous one. So Taranauts was somewhat inspired by that. So I thought to myself that these kids, my, my heroes uh, would live in India and then go, to all over the place and solve problems in different worlds and then come back. And from what they learned by solving problems somewhere else, they would solve an Indian problem. This is how I had conceptualized it in the beginning. Um, but then my editor asked me a very good question. She said, if they are Indian children, what will they call their mother? I said, what? What does that mean? She said, will, will they call their mother Ma? Will they call her mommy? Will they call her amma? Will they call her ai? Will they call her ammi? What are they going to call her? So I said, um, I don't know. So she said, you know, the moment you say that somebody's calling their mother amma, then it becomes a South Indian child. If you say ma, it becomes maybe from North India. If you say ai, it becomes a Maharashtrian child. So India is so diverse. If you, everybody will start saying, oh, where is this child from? Where is this child from? I said, that's true, so what shall we do? So she said, why don't you create an entirely new universe and let your characters live there and do what they want there? I said, okay, that's a great idea, but that universe is going to be a lot like India, but it won't be, and it's as different from India and as alike to India as, as I could make it. Okay, so today I want to take you all for a trip to that new universe. Are you all ready to visit a new universe with me? Yes, okay, great. So 
first of all, if you're traveling to a new universe, can you put in the chat box what we should take? What might be a sensible, sensible things to pack if we're going to a new universe? Food, yes. Dokla, okay. Clothes, yes. Water, camera, a hat, clothes. Everyone so books, items, huh? food, open mind. Wow, I love that. Tent, culture, uh, spaceship, new technology, love, so sweet. Uh, supplies, notebooks, an open soul, imagination. That's wonderful. Moral values. Your mom, you want to pack your mom, yeah, because if you go off to a new universe, you need mom around. Uh, chocolate, yes, because they may not have chocolate there. Courage, and, and wonderful. And uh, your family, paints. Mm, okay. Ideas, clothes, friends, happiness, family members. Okay. Okay. Beauty. Coca-Cola. Okay, fine. Chips. <laughs> of course, how can we travel anywhere without chips? We will die. So we have to take positivity, hope, wonderful. I like that. A diary, that would be useful. Yes. Oxygen. Somebody's very pragmatic, practical person. Everything, right? Stories that make us happy. Great. Okay. Bravery, courage, happiness, excitement. That is really important. And one thing that I wanted, but nobody has said yet, gravity. You're going to pack gravity. Excellent. Okay. Yeah curiosity, mindfulness. No. Okay. So nobody said, uh, I'm going to stop looking at the chat box now. So nobody said curiosity. I think open mind sort of covers curiosity, but you know what we need when we're traveling to, and nobody said, I'll check if there is a map. Not one of you said map. But at least one of, one of you, I think, said a camera because how will you come back and post on Instagram? that you went and visited this new town, new universe, if you don't take your camera. And some of you took said notebooks, and who's going to believe you, right? So good to take a camera, not, not sure if it will work there, whether you can charge it there or whatever, but it's good to pack it when you don't know. So creativity, okay, great. So we we'll, have you all packed it? I want you to all pack your bags, please, with all this, especially with curiosity and open mind and your imagination, pack lots of imagination. The one thing that children have, that adults have totally lost, most adults totally lose it, is a healthy imagination, also curiosity. If adults remained curious, they would never be bored, you know, but only children, it appears, are curious about new things. Okay, so have you packed it all? Now, can you please secure yourself? Seat belts on, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. Seat belts, seat belts. I don't know whether you want to do it like a roller coaster kind of uh, seat belt or a car kind of seat belt or a plane kind of seat belt, whatever it is, make sure you're secure. Okay, now I want you to close your eyes and I'm going, I, I mean, all of you promise me you're going to close your eyes because I want you to then open your mind's eye. This eye only sees what's in front of you. That's too boring. In your mind's eye, you can see worlds that don't even exist, right? So I want you to imagine this new world. I will describe it to you, okay? And uh, I, I, you as when I say something that's particularly wonderful about this new universe, usually if I'm in a class and you know children are sitting in front of me, I say, I want you to imagine it and go, ooh. Now I can't hear you because you're all uh, muted, but what you can do, close your eyes. And when I say something particularly exciting about that new world, go like this. Ooh. I want to see your mouths and your hands shaking like this so that you're feeling goosebumps. Can you show me how you'll do it? Can I see some of you do it? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. That's that's a good, you're being good sports, Riddhi, Ira, Pratul, very nice. And Tanishka, nice. Okay, so I want you to do that. So shall we all, shall you, I mean, I won't close my eyes. You or I can also close my eyes. Close your eyes and I will just describe this world, okay? Right, and I want absolute silence. I mean, I have silence because you're all muted, but try and make sure you are also in a silent space, okay? Right. We are going to travel today to a brand new universe, a dazzling, shimmering, shining universe. Ooh, a universe called Mithya. Ooh, in Mithya, 
now I want you to imagine, okay? In Mithya is an endless, shimmering, shining sea called Darya. Ooh, in the middle of Darya, from the middle of Darya rises the bad-tempered volcano, Kailas. Ooh, above Mithya, shines the 32 starred super sun of Mithya called Tara. Ooh. And in Darya are bobbing the eight shimmering, sparkling worlds of Mithya. And their names are Luster, Shimmer, Shine, Dazzle, Scintilla, Glow, Oh, and two others that I can't recall just now, but they all are shining, shimmering, sparkling worlds. On top of Kailas, in the land of Nevernight, lives the benevolent, wonderful Emperaza of Mithya, and his name is Shunya. Ooh, Shunya. Here he comes, Shunya. And down in Darya, under the endless shimmering sparkling sea of Darya is Mithya's maximum security prison in the fiery lands. And who is a prisoner who has been captured, locked up inside the maximum security prison of Mithya in the fiery lands under the endless ocean of Darya? His name is Sharp Azur. Ooh, he is the twin brother of Shunya. He has exactly Shunya's capabilities, his talents, his intelligence. The only difference between Shunya and Shapazur is that Shunya thinks about the welfare of his people. He makes unselfish decisions. He makes good choices. And Shapazur, who is just as talented, just as brave, just as bright, he makes only selfish decisions. And that's why he has been relegated to the fiery lands. Okay, so can you all imagine we are coming into land now? Oh my God, it looks as if there's a huge party happening. There's a huge party happening in Mithya, where on top of Kailas in the land of Nevernight, it looks as if all the people of Mithya, the Mithya course, have come to participate in the celebrations. Oh my God, it looks like too much fun. Let's drop in. Let's go to the party. Are we ready? Yes, you can open your eyes now. Did you imagine it? Did you imagine Mithya? Okay, can I take you through a little PowerPoint presentation and I'll show you what Mithya looks like, a map of Mithya. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Wait for it. Okay, so this is an introduction to the Taranauts. Who or what are the Taranauts? Can you all see it? See my screen? Yeah, okay, good. Who or what are the Taranauts? The series is called Taranauts. Who are these Taranauts? What does it mean? What does the word Taranaut sound like to you? Think about it. Okay, who or what are the Taranauts? Who's writing on it? Who's writing on my screen? Exactly at the point, wait, exactly at the point where night meets day and sea meets sky. Or maybe just around the darkest corner of this very room lies a whole different universe. A sparkling universe, a never before seen universe, a magical universe. A universe that we will visit today. Okay, so pack nothing but your imaginations, fasten your seatbelts, and away we go. Hello, Earthkins, welcome to Mithya, the home of the Taranauts. Now, let's see. Okay, this is Mithya. Did, did you imagine it like this? If you keep scratching over it, people won't be able to see it. Others, I think you should be considerate of other people who are watching it. Can you see the, can you see Mithya? 
Can you see the endless shimmering shining sea of Darya? Do you see how the bad tempered volcano Kailas rises out of it? Yeah, and can you see, oh, somebody's put a heart sweetly. Okay, and somebody's just scratching on it. Okay, uh, and do you see the eight worlds bobbing around? The eight worlds of Mithya bobbing around? Do you see the fiery lands, Shapazur's prison? Do you see where Shunya lives, the land of never night on top? Can you see Shunya's palace? You can. And what is the name of the, the sun? The sun that shines over Mithya, which is actually a super sun. It's made up of 32 other suns. Can you see? What's it called? What's it called? Do you know what it's called? Nobody is messaging. Nobody wants to, wants to take a guess. You can see it. If you can see my cursor, it's, it's right there. Tara, that's right, it's Tara. That's right. So, yes, so Tara is there. And what else can you see? Can you see, how do you think the people of Mithya, people who live, uh, they're not called people, they're called Mithya Kos because they're people of Mithya. People of Mithya are called Mithyakos, and there is shine, glow, luster, glitter, scintilla, dazzle, all these worlds. How do they go to the top of Kailas? How do they go to the land of Never Night? How do they go and how did they get to the party? You can chat. You can put it in the chat box. How did they get to the party? No, they didn't fly. No jetpacks. Take a look. Just, just observe. Observe carefully the picture. Yes, that's right. Vidhan. The magma lift, they went by the magma lift. Yes, that's right. Did you see now, now people are realizing they went by the magma lift. What do you think a magma lift is? Remember it's a volcano, Kailas. So, and it's a bad tempered volcano. So every time, every time somebody wants to go up to the top of Kailas, you get into the magma lift and you wait for Kailas to erupt. And because it's a bad tempered volcano, it keeps erupting. Okay, so every time, the magma lift goes up, but what about the magma? When it go, when people go up in a magma lift, don't they get burned? What happens to all that magma? Yeah, it, no, no, it, it's not water, it, it's magma, no. But can you see what happens when it goes up? Yes, Divya, Divishri has got it right. There are magma cups. Do you see the magma cups? And they collect all the hot magma. They attract the magma using strong magmatational forces. And once it all goes into the magma, uh, into the magma cups, what happens to the magma? It goes back to the bottom of the sea to be recycled because the people of Mithya are very big on recycling. Okay, so this is Mithya. You got some idea of how it is. And the big party, you can see my cursor. The big party was happening here in the land of Never Night on mega stage. And what was so wonderfully special? What were they celebrating? They were celebrating something called an octoversary. An octoversary. What do you think they were celebrating? It's called an octoversary. What does octoversary sound? Yes, exactly, Aniket. So an eighth anniversary. They were celebrating the eighth anniversary of what? Celebrating the eighth anniversary of Shunya becoming Emperaza. And why is this number eight so important on Mithya? For us, it's always number 10, right? We celebrate. Uh, 25th anniversaries, we celebrate 50th anniversary. Wait, I can't see what's on the chat box here. Eight stars, yes, that's right. Eight, it has eight planets, it has eight stars. Octopus, yes, they are special number, Pradim, that's right. So somehow eight seems to recur a lot on Mithya. So you notice that there were eight, there were not eight stars, not eight stars actually. There were eight planets, but how many stars? I, did I mention how many stars, how many suns were there in the Super Sun Tara? How many? 32, that's right. Wow, some of you have really been listening. Eight is equal to infinity. That's a wonderful, wonderful interpretation. I didn't think anybody would get it. Very few people get it. Because if you turn eight on its side, it becomes infinity, right? And what is the Emperor's name? What is the Emperor's name? Anybody remembers? There are eight books as well. Shunya. Shunya means what in Hindi and Sanskrit? Shunya means zero, and zero is the same as infinity, right? It's a number without end. Okay, so zero and infinity are somewhat, in, according to Indian philosophy, they're somewhat the same thing. Okay, 
where, so zero means you become nothing and the whole world becomes yours. You become part of the world or you become infinity and you embrace the whole world in your arms. And it's the same thing. Okay, wonderful. Yes. So his name is Shunya. Um, and uh, yeah, so 30, what, what was I saying? Yeah, so eight is a very important number. So the Octoversary is being celebrated. And the most wonderful thing about the Octoversary, what is very, very special this year, it's not even, your years are not even called years. You know, on Mithya, they speak a language called Tara Tongue. And in Tara tongue, a year, like what we think of as a year, is called an octon. Then they have octets, octals, and octites. Instead of days, weeks, months, and they don't have hours and minutes, they have dings and dinglings. And each of these uh, elements of time, are not, like a ding is not 60 dinglings. It's different from Earth. But dingling is the smaller divisions of the big number of for the time okay so what is very special about the octoversary it's a super tara nova a super tara nova so what has happened for the very first time the 32 star spirits the 32 sons of tara have come down to dance at the celebrations and sunlight has you know what light what what color of light bathes the earth what color of light bathes the earth. What color is the sunlight that comes down on the earth? Yellow, okay, yellow, someone said yellow, 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 yellow. White, somebody said white, orange. Yes, gold, lovely. Blue, okay, fine, orange, red, transparent, yes. So we know that sunlight, whatever it is, has one color, right? You can think of it as white light, or yellow light or golden light or transparent yellow light, but it's just one color. But Tara is made up of 32 suns and every four suns form a cluster giving one particular shade of light on a planet. So there's shimmering green light and those four stars are called the emeralds. Then there's shimmering blue light and those four stars are called the sapphires. Then there is shimmering red light and those four stars are called What would they be called? Rubies, Ariana, excellent. Yes, everybody got it. And what about, um, then there are these blue-green stars, a cluster of blue-green stars. What would they be called? Blue-green. Turquoise, somebody said turquoise, it went off so fast. Yes, teal, turquoise, very good, excellent. So there are turquoises, there are uh, rubies, there are emeralds, there are sapphires, there is... Uh, uh, what else, what else, what else, I forgot. Uh, yeah, and there is a pink, pink light, shimmery pink light. What could that be? Shimmery pink light. And this is a, this is a precious stone found under the sea. Pinktopolis, that's a nice, amethyst. Amethyst is purple light. Yes, there, there are amethysts as well. Corals, that's right. So there are, yes, we have topaz. We, no, we don't have topaz. Instead of topaz, we have another yellow stone called a citrine. So there are citrines and corals. So, so four, four stars of each color make up Tara and they have all come down to dance at the celebrations. So I'm gonna go back and show you my screen again. Okay, can you see the, the map? And now let's see. See, this is a close up of Tara, Tara's sons. Uh, wait. This is a close-up of Kailas and the magma lift. Here he is, Emperor Shunya, brave and wise. Do you see? I, I was very keen that he shouldn't look like a superhero, like a Western superhero at all. He looks like an Indian superhero. Does he not? Yeah, so this is Shunya, and he's Emperor Shunya, brave and wise. Now, nobody can see it if people scratch over. Wow, yeah. That's how he looks. Now, this is his loyal lieutenant. What's her name? Shakti. Shakti, Shakti. You can call her whatever you want. So that's his loyal lieutenant. She is the, called MIB, the most intelligent being on Mithya. Then here is the baddie to beat all baddies, Sharp Azur. And you know what he does? What awful thing he does when the Octoversary celebrations are going on? He escapes from his prison in the fiery lands. He lands up on, in the land of Nevenite. And what awful thing do you think he does? 
What awful thing do you think he does? You can type. Not writing on the picture, but you can type and let me know in the chat box. What do you think he did? Harm people? No, he didn't. Robbery, torture, bad things, destroy, make rain. Sabotage is how? Burnt everything. Then the story would be over in the first book itself, first set, 10 pages. Cause trouble. Destroy is not a wedding. It's a, <laughs> he doesn't destroy the wedding. There's no way. Hostages. Yes, that's, that's you getting warm. Rani Lakshmi Bhai. Okay. Uh, so hostages. Who did he take as hostages? Who did he take as? Ha, ah, the star, somebody said. Yes, kidnapping, hostages. So he took the 32 Tara sons as hostages. He captured them in his silver spinternet and he disappeared. But before he disappeared, he said something. He said, I'm in each of the eight worlds of Mithya. I'm going to hide four of the stars. And I need some champions from Mithya to go out and find. First of all, they have to locate these stars. Then they have to retrieve them. No, I'm keeping 32 riddles. 32 riddles on the eight worlds of Mithya. 30 riddles and puzzles. And these champions have to go to each of the worlds, locate the riddles, retrieve the riddles, and then they have to solve the riddles. And every time one riddle is solved, one Tara son goes free. And if these 32 riddles and puzzles are not solved within the time I have given, then Shunya goes to the fiery lands, and I become emperors of Mithya. Now, everybody is so scared and they're yelling and they're saying, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Because there's no light also. He's captured this 32 stars. Only the emergency lights are there. So all the Mithyakos are so worried. And then Shunya and Shakti say, don't worry, Mithyakos, because this had been foretold. And now we have champions. We have champions. They, they don't know that they are champions, but they are there. And those, and then the light shines on three people in the crowd. And everyone says, who are these champions? Who is going to save us? They're expecting like burly Mithyakos. They're expecting like celebrity Mithyakos, scientists, people like that who will solve Shapazur's riddles. But the light shines on three little Mithyakins. So what do you think a Mithyakin is? What is a Mithyakin? Kids, that's right. So the kids of Mithya are called Mithya kins. Now let's meet those kids. Those are the Taranauts. Here we go. So I'm going to let you meet the kids. This is Zarpa. She's one of the kids, one of the Taranauts. Then there is Zwala. Okay. And then there is Tufan. So Zarpa, Zwala. So Zarpa, Zwala, and Tufan. So the, the three kids say, the three Mithyakins are like, us? No, 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 no. We don't want to do, we don't, we don't know how to do anything. We can't be champions. Please leave us alone. It can't be us. And then Mithya, and then um, Shunya and, Sh and Shakti say that you don't know this, but each of you has a special spirit parent. And you have been gifted. You do have special powers within you, but you can only find them after we have trained you. So we're taking away, taking, and they assure the people of Mithya, we're taking the children away, they, they will be trained and come back and come back an octal later, and they will display their powers to you. And then you will see how amazing they are. So now I want you to guess. This girl's name is Zarpa. Does it, if, if you think a little laterally, does it sound like some Indian word? Who do you think her spirit parent would be? Zarpa. Just think. Design of shirt of Tufan, is it okay? Zapping, zapping, uh, Karpa zapping, Zeus, no, no Zeus. This is Indian story, remember? Fast, Zarpa. Uh, snake, that's right, Krishan. Sarpa, Sarpa and Zarpa, excellent. A anybody knows how to disable, annotate? Who do you think, uh, is, so Zarpa's spirit parent is the snake, that's right. And who is... Zwala spirit parent, do you think? Zwala. What does Zwala sound like? Fire. That's right. Jwala. Zwala. So fire is her spirit parent. And who is Tufan's spirit parent? Yes. Wind, thunder. Excellent. So all of you got it. So this is why their names are Zwala, Zarpa, and Tufan. So if any of you know how... I can stop, uh, disable, annotate. You can tell me and I'll do it. 
tornado, storm, fire. That's right. So these are there. Uh, in the security, remove tick mark. Hmm? Okay. Let's see. Security. I don't know. Spotlight, stamp, draw, text, select, mouse, eraser, format, undo, redo, clear. No, clear all drawings. That you are doing, I think. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's leave it. It's fine. Let's go on. And it's too sad, but I feel bad that the children are doing this. I didn't expect this. And I hope they stop because everyone should be able to enjoy it. And this is not letting people enjoy it. Okay. Anyway, Zarpa, Zwala, Tufan. So now when they when people of Mithya come back, they can see their, they can see the powers. Okay, let's see, they have learned. So here is Zarpa. What is her superpower? She's a snake, so she runs very quickly, slithers along very fast, and she can stretch herself in every direction. Okay, but she but the problem is when she stretches too much beyond a point, she could break, and that could be very dangerous. So she has to be careful about that. Now, here is Zwala demonstrating her powers after she's been trained. And then here is Tufan. So Tufan can create a gentle breeze that will make even babies fall asleep, or he can create a tornado. And Zwala, she can create just enough warmth to warm frozen pizza in her hand so that everybody can eat, eat hot pizza. Or she can create a destructive fire. Okay, so this is this. Then these three Taranauts, they have to battle terrifying odds they have like like this carnivorous flowers. Can you see the flowers going after them after the taranauts? That happens in book two. Then vicious sea slits. See, can you see they're playing a game of snakes and ladders, but it's a 3D game and it's really high. And can you see Zwala here? A Zarpa that is standing at four, 529. Yeah, so they have to battle vicious sea slits. Then Let's see what else they have to do. They have to battle scary shredder heads. The, what do the shredder heads look like? They look like Swiss Army knives that have been opened. Then they have to also battle the dreaded Bijli March, poisonous vampires, and much more. They have to solve problems like this, puzzles like this. And the books, all the eight Taranauts books are full of puzzles like this that you can solve and see if you can solve them before the Taranauts do. Crack some codes like this read some maps, piece together maps and read them like this and indulge in all kinds of mental and physical gymnastics. Okay. The, uh, but most importantly, the three Taranauts have to learn how to work together as a team. Isn't that the most important thing? It's not about have, that there are three superstars in the team. If the three superstars cannot work together, then no team is going to succeed, right? Where can we get the books? You can get them on Amazon. Yeah, most importantly, please stop whoever is doing this. You know, I'm just, I know, I know everybody is just scribbling and not letting other kids. So three Taranauts must work together as a team. Eight rescue missions in eight worlds, 32 riddles to crack, 32 Tarasans to free. Are the Taranauts up to it? Read the series and find out. Here's the books. The secret, the quest for the shine emeralds, the riddle of the luster sapphires. Can you see those carnivores flowers here? The secret of this, not the secret, it's called something else, but I forget what it, this was the earlier cover. It's called the no secret, secret of the sparkle amethyst. No, not secret of the glow rubies, the race for the glow rubies. Who's that again? The mystery of the scintilla. Enough, please don't do it. The mystery of the scintilla silvers, the something of the shimmer citrines. I can't even read my own. The key to the shimmer citrines. The uh, what are the glitter turquoises? But you can read it. The search for the glitter turquoises and the magic of the dazzle corals. That's right. And now for the million PQP, PQP. What is PQP question? What is PQP in 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 uh, in Tara tongue? What do you think PQP means? Rupee, like some money, like there's there's no sound. Can you not hear me? 
yeah money some kind of money million pqp question would you make a good taranaut so do you want to solve some riddles with me right now the kind of thing that the taranauts had but for now people have to stop uh, thing otherwise nobody can even see the puzzles yeah let's see uh, can you see it or not yeah okay let's see okay these are words from this is not a puzzle i'm just telling you but this is uh, these are words from tara tongue and can you see how they don't exist in english these words they don't but tara tongue is made up of a mixture of english and indian language words samchori is something that they really enjoy eating what do you think a samchori is they really enjoy eating it in in, in mithya not just kachori samosa and kachori a mix of samosa and kachori that's right that's a samchori what do you think is brunesca it's a drink nandika please don't do it brunesca what do you think brunesca is not fresca coffee yeah coffee type of thing why did i call it why do they call it uh brunesca yes that's right brew and nescafe <laughs> now what do you think a creposa is it's another it's another lovely arab and what is a creposa crepe and crepe kiara it's not ah crepe and priya priyanka has said crepe uh, crepe and a dosa a mixture of a crepe and a dosa that's right and what do you think is a silly koof what or who is a silly koof not silly kulfi no not kulfi no silly goof yes that's right manisha silly and bevakoof together is a silly koof so he said don't be a silly koof okay and then <laughs> what do you think is a dirt echo scope dirt echo scope yes silly and bevakoof that's right not a kaleidoscope think about it read it differently read not not a microscope tell why is it a telescope atharva it is a telescope but why is it is telescope why is a telescope called that dur dur dekho it's like a dur dekho scope to look at something that's far away so a dur dekho scope uh, in 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 uh, mithya means a telescope okay that's right see far scope that's right now let's see what else is there this can you solve now okay this is oh my god guys if you do this nobody can see the puzzle so this is wala's puzzle because she gets really hot right so this is wala's puzzle for you the first one is the first question is what is a place that we go press the toolbar on top sorry sorry one sec somebody's given me some advice one minute uh the the messages come so fast that i'm not able to see the message can you i don't know okay never mind leave it so what is a place that you can stay at when you go out of town what is a place that you stay at hotel that's right arav is like on it always fastest finger first yes that's right yeah okay next what is um what is a sausage in a bun next one sausage in a hot dog aryana excellent varun very good so that's a hot dog now uh what is it what do you you what do you call something that records an image how do you record an image one of the ways to record an image no no not a, not of uh close 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 ah shyan shyan has shyan had it a photograph that's right it's a photograph now the uh, next one number 4 puzzle number 4 sport an olympic sport shotgun no shot is an olympic sport shot put priyanka excellent and garima also yeah so shot put that's right now the last one is a tricky one let's see if any of you gets it uh not not it can't be swimming and all no it has to fit in that number 4 so number 5 is a mixture of things a random mixture of things that don't necessarily go together 
a random mixture of things that don't kichdi like a kichdi but in english hot pot garima excellent so she got it very good very very few people get this so hot pot is the right answer excellent you want to do some more you want to do one more kind of puzzle okay let's go let's take it to the i'm sure they have run out of time but i don't think i'll wait for question answers because it'll be too crazy there are too many people so we'll just solve some puzzles that may be more fun uh okay can people stop ruining it for everybody else can you stop writing on the screen please unscramble these words says the says wala the answers are things that give out light just like me let's do the first one star that's right second one second candle excellent ruthvi yeah candle is great fourth one third one lamp somebody already so many people put lamp palm not a palm lamp fourth one fourth torch vibhav very good deepika very good uh, okay then fifth one firefly somebody got sorry back couldn't even see who it was but yeah firefly riddhi also got firefly excellent my god you guys are bright okay one more do you want to do one more okay yes says aro yeah okay okay fine so this is a teaser it's a riddle we are trying to find out the name of shunya's mount the the animal that he rides so in my books there are no dragons there are no gnomes there are no goblins these are all indian creatures okay from indian mythology now how to we may so we are trying to make create it this is the recipe to create that animal animal's name so take one half of a big boat what is a big boat called no it's not a it's not it's not none of these things it's an indian word so you won't be familiar ship that's right ship so if you take one half of a ship what letters are there what letters sh excellent so write down sh those are the first two letters of the name of this animal very good so it's one half of a big boat second add three quarters of what is not soft what is not soft rough hard hard that's right so shard somebody got shard excellent so sh comes from the first one and ard comes from the second one three quarter then stir in what comes after t what comes after t sugar shard no not sugar go on pot no no cup no milk no e ah uh, not e what comes after t u yes 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 somebody got it yes so u the letter u comes after t so you to hear the sound only not just read it so put a u shardu then finish with a happy musical note what are the musical notes in indian music it is sare gama pa da ni sa but in in, in <laughs> no but in in western music what is it do re mi pa yeah so la ti do so right so is does do sound like a happy musical note do 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 no re 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 no mi 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 no fa 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 no so 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 no la 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 does that sound happy yeah so put a la shardula that's right so roar your shardula is ready maybe a good idea to run for your life right now so um what's his name shunya's vehicle his mount is a shardula okay now let's see one more maybe okay this is just a fun thing they are called what zits this is nothing to do with taranauts i simply put it because i, I just wanted but to solve the puzzles in taranauts everybody has to think a little differently like what comes the first book in the series is called the quest for the shine emeralds i'm freezing is it okay can you hear me just somebody nod if you uh, reet can you hear me because i can see you okay yes yes we can hear yes okay so this is a, you just have to look at these words a little differently okay and tell me what it means so i'll i'll solve the second one for you so that you know what i mean uh, people say, so second one what is it warming that's right warming but it's not just warming there's a phrase so warming is written this way so what could it be not global no global doesn't mean it's written ulta no going vertically so it's called it is the phrase that's hidden there is warming up warming up because warming is written going upwards warming up 
you warm up to something, right? Warming up. Okay. What about the sec third one? What do you think it is? Neck pain, not neck pain. Yes, there is neck. There are the words neck and pain, but what phrase is there? Where is the? No, not panic. Uh, not neck. Pain in the neck. That's right. Somebody got it. He, yeah, it's like you're such a pain in the neck. Means you're such a pain. Monica got it. Ashwi got it. Aya Ashant got it. Yes, good. So that is pain in the neck. Okay, so just to read it a little differently. What about number four? Can you see the words? On top it says rest. Uh, below it says your. You are like you know you apostrophe r e. So what could it mean? Tired. No. You are above the rest. That's very close. You are, you are not. You are not above the rest. No. You are is below. Ah, very good. All of you are guessing nicely, but you know what it is actually. <laughs> Nobody got it yet. I'm sure you'll get it if you spend some time. You're below the rest. No, I wouldn't put such a horrible thing to such a horrible phrase. You're below the rest. No, it is you. You are ah. Prabha Kaitan Foundation got it. <laughs> I don't know if it was Mansi. You are under arrest. You are under arrest. Arrest, right? So you are under arrest. Okay. What about the fifth one? What is it? Put on what? Put on button. No. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody almost get. Ah, yes. Somebody got it. Put on weight. Uh, put on weight. Ton is a weight, a measure of weight. So put on weight. Now, what about wonderful, excellent. I want you to go home. I mean, once this is over tonight, try and make some what sits like this. Make your own. Okay. And what is number one? What do you think number one is? We came to that last. Put on weight. Yeah. But what is number one? Clean everywhere. It's not clean everywhere. It's not clean everywhere. Where to clean? When clean? Where is clean? <laughs> clean up. No, 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 no. Ah, that's right, Pratyusha. Clean underwear. Clean underwear. <laughs> but you can think of where as W E A R. So clean underwear. Excellent. So I'll stop sharing. Clean underwear, Ariana. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here I am back. So I hope you had a good time, enjoyed solving those puzzles. So I'll just show you book number one again in case you want to buy it. I'm sure it's available on Amazon or somewhere. Uh, this is what it is. It's Taranauts, The Quest for the Shine Emeralds. Maybe you can also tell your uh, school librarians to get a set, the whole set, eight books, so that you can all read the book, okay? so. Now, if any of, I don't know, Mansi, should we be take, take some questions or shall we wind up? If there are too many kids, I don't think it will be possible for yeah. us. If you want yeah, one or two, maybe, but I, I don't think. You know, do you yeah. want to take a few? If... Yeah, if, if anybody wants to ask me a question, you can just put it in the chat box. Very, very, I can't uh, unmute anybody. I want to ask from how many years you're writing the books? How many? Years. Oh, I took four years. Every six months, a new book would come out. So from 2009, I started in the second half of 2009, one book came out. Then two in 2010, two in 2011, two in 2012, and 2013, June, I think that was the last book. Thank you, Priyoska. It was very nice to meet you as well. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. I have recently given the responsibility of the school magazines and the Pallav. What is your advice for me? What do the readers like to read? Oh, I think, I, I mean, I like to read and I know that children like to read uh, stuff with a little humor in it. It's nice to have some humor always and a good plot where a lot of action happens, you know, and there's a lot of good dialogue, good characters. And not some character who is entirely, oh, thank you, <laughs> Varun, thank you. So it's not, not nobody is entirely good or entirely bad. 
meet people you know sometimes they're good sometimes they're bad so people are allowed to be bad sometimes and if they if they feel sorry and they can come back thank you pallavi was it yeah somebody else so keep that in mind and don't don't take something which is very long and not getting to the point so you can advise people who have submitted articles like that to try and make it shorter crisper because people want to read something that's you know and and always good grammar and punctuation and spelling no getting away from that yeah i hope that helped you yeah anybody else I think ara wants to ask a question and pratul pratul you can talk yes ma'am i can talk ma'am i want to ask a question ma'am that ma'am ma'am i want to know ma'am the ma'am previous time that ma'am you have suffered ma'am i i am born in 2013 when you have created the book <laughs> wow okay so ma'am i want to know that uh, what is what happened to your childhood why your ch- childhood was so harsh no it wasn't harsh at all i just imagined that it was because i was thinking everybody had fun in england no no ma i had a wonderful childhood actually so <laughs> yeah so many questions i'm sorry somebody else wanted to ask this but thank you mansha i'm yes, glad yes. you enjoyed it yeah uh, arab yes yes ma'am uh, i would like to say you are one of literally one of the most influential authors i've ever met i mean your books are absolutely amazing right. literally i mean just i mean usually people are used to seeing western types of you know folklore and all of that which gives them different insights but if you really view it from the traditional side you will just you know you can just realize that what how diverse your tradition is Thank and you, i can get that type of element in this book so absolutely amazing please keep this up this is up this is an absolutely amazing book i mean please keep this up thank you so much arav thank but you for very particip- amazing participating so enthusiastically in the chats thank you okay yeah and somebody else i think i think we should just <laughs> should wind up okay everyone would be sorry kids thank you pankaj puzzles were fun i'm so glad i'm so glad yes i am glad hi rv thank you you all and if you all want to write stories i just leave you with a piece of advice any of you who wants to write a story or be an author i actually have just two things to say to everyone who wants to be a writer first one is read 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 if you don't read you can't be a writer and read as many different books different kinds of stories as possible okay and rv wants to ask a question will you type it sweetie type it because she, thank you mehika you read daily very good and the second second one is write 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 because if you want to be a writer you have to write you keep reading and imagining stories in your head but you never write then you won't develop your skill you won't hone the craft you have to practice everything is about practice practice bye bye excellent whoever has written a story themselves wonderful and keep your curiosity open keep your mind open and never judge people because everybody has a story so don't immediately say ah, that's a boring character i don't want to know there are no boring people in the world there are no bad people in the world people sometimes behave badly but that doesn't make them bad people even good people behave badly so thank you um so on behalf of the foundation uh, i would like to thank you ms rupa pai for this amazing interactive session i think the kids enjoyed thoroughly and seeing the way they are still on and they want to ask so many questions i think it was an amazing brilliant session i'm, I'm looking enough. forward to many more such sessions uh i would also like to thank our presenter shri cement limited and education for all trust last but not least i would also like to thank our young listeners without their enthusiasm this session would not happen successfully yes absolutely so i think stay well stay safe yeah. have a great weekend and thank you all of you forward. have a wonderful weekend thank you all for coming thank you all for writing in whoever has said they enjoyed the session in the chat i'm so sorry i can't get back to you individually but thank you my heart is full i'm sending you a big group hug to everyone okay have a great weekend bye thank you so much